This is the IT12 by Geekom. It's a mini PC, of course, but this one survives being run over by a car and smashed with a bat, a cinder block put on top of it and smashed with a sledgehammer. It was hooked up to a chain and dragged behind a motorcycle, thrown down a flight of stairs, burned and frozen, and then finally thrown into the spin cycle, all to get pulled out and power on Windows 11 without a hitch. That's pretty wild if you ask me. So when Geekom reached out and asked if they could send me one to check out for myself, how could I resist? All right, realistically, I'm not gonna shoot this thing with a double out buckshot today. Maybe that's a good reason for you to subscribe and see what we do with this later. But for now, we're just going to take a look at it, okay? No destruction, no Tannerite yet. So this is the IT12 by Geekom. It's a mini PC. I was super surprised at the video that they sent me. I showed a little bit of B-roll earlier. Like, I get it. Marketing fluff, right? But realistically, if this thing was put through the paces like that and then booted up to Windows, how are me impressed? It's a tiny little box with grown up parts. That sounded inappropriate. Let me say that again. This thing is surprisingly beefy and it feels hefty. So the Geekom IT12, they've got a couple of different versions of this IT series, IT13s. Ooh, that is collecting all kinds of handprints. Look at that. They have an IT13, they have an IT15 series, and that essentially breaks down to the generation of CPU that's in the box. This machine comes in a handful of different flavors. The specific one that I got is an Intel i5 12450H with 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig NVMe SSD. But it also comes in an i7 and an i9 flavor. So let's talk about what's, what this box is for. Many PCs can be used for many things. The fact that this is so rugged, if it really is as rugged as it says it is, this could be good in a lot of different scenarios. Warehouses, places where weather can get to it. They nailed it with a blowtorch. They froze it with cold air and it survived. You know, it's not going to be waterproof or water resistant for that matter. But in an area that gets super hot, it could be good for some versatile needs and options there. I like the color. It's like this pretty little bluish teal. Again, this one comes with the i5 12450H, which is eight cores and 12 threads, I believe. 16 gigs of DDR4 RAM. Okay, that's fine. DDR4 works fine for the majority of cases, and it's cheap. That just makes that that much easier to be able to upgrade it. 512 gig M.2 NVMe SSD. It's the 2280 size. We'll get into that in a second, because on the inside of this, I found another surprise when I opened it up. Let's look at the I.O. on the box. On the front, We've got two full-sized USBs, so the USB-A, and they're super speed, and one has power delivery, both at 10 gigabit per second speeds. A headphone jack, which is nice, of course, the power button on the front, where it belongs. Off to one side, we've got a Kensington lock. Who actually uses those? I guess if this is gonna be in a kiosk, that totally makes sense. On the other side though, is a full size SD card slot. Full size, not the not the mini SDs or micro SD cards. And then on the back, we've got the we've got the barrel connector for power connections. We've got two HDMIs at 4K. I think they're HDMI 2.0, which is 4K60. I don't know, fact check me there, please. We've also got two USB-Cs that are delivering Thunderbolt. So USB 4, 40 gig per second. Another two USB-As, full-size USBs. One's that super speed 10 gig transfer and the other one is just a plain old USB 2, I believe, or a USB 3. No, it's a USB 2. So perfect for, you know, wireless keyboard and mouse dongles. It does run with Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.2. And then the part I'm excited about, two and a half gig ethernet on board. Let's open it up and look at the inside. I do have to say that I appreciate this. So we've got these little rubber feet, of course, which makes sense, but inside the rubber feet is where the screws are to take the bottom plate off. Why don't more OEMs do this? I'm so tired of ripping off rubber feet to get to screws to try to put rubber feet back on and they never stick back the same. This just makes sense. And 
The screws themselves in the bottom plate here, they don't come out. You're not gonna lose them. They stay in place and they're easy to get in and out and you can get into your machine without ripping it apart to a point where it's a pain to put it back together. Good job, Geekom. I give you brownie points there. So let's take a closer look at the inside of this box. Again, we've got a 2280 M.2 NVMe SSD here. Next to it, underneath this ribbon cable, which we'll get to the ribbon cable in a second, pretty freaking cool. Underneath that here is another M.2 port or slot. It's a 2242 M.2. So you've got a full size slot here and then a secondary slot as well. Pretty nice. And then two just plain old, absolutely replaceable Sodim DDR4 laptop style memory. They're easy to get a hold of. They're cheap. It's not soldered to the board. It is upgradable. Let's look at this ribbon cable that I talked about. So on the case, the bottom of the case here is a thermal pad right on where that SSD sits. Right here, the ribbon cable is actually a SATA adapter. So if you've got just a plain old two and a half inch SATA SSD, you want to be able to add some additional storage to this. So there we go. Now we've got you know, essentially up to a four terabyte SATA SSD for, you know, data drives. Well, let's pull that out for now because I don't want to try to boot to it. Who knows what's on this thing? Let's put this back together and take a closer look at how it runs. Okay, before we get that far into this, I'm not sure that second M.2 slot is what we think it is. So I took this, which is a 2230 NVMe and 3D printed an adapter to make it 2242 size. Cool, absolutely acceptable. I've done that in many a things. Went to go install it and it does not fit in that slot. Like it is just straight up not fitting. Okay, fine. So I took another Samsung NVMe, just a plain old M.2, and I thought maybe, I don't know, something's wrong with that SSD. No, that size doesn't fit. But I took an M.2 SATA SSD. So you can see this is actually a SATA drive and it's the MB key pattern on the end. So if I take this, it actually slides in. Now, of course, the SSD itself is too long. It's sticking out the side of the box. I'm not gonna be able to run it this way. Maybe I could, I'm not gonna try. And I guess keep that in mind that, just wanted to show that, let's go plug it in and see how it runs. So really this Geekom PC is a pretty sweet little machine and is great for a workstation like this where you've got limited room and you wanna get a lot of horsepower. So for like an extra, I don't know, 100 bucks, 150 bucks maybe, you can get yourself a uh, upgraded RAM kit up to 64 gigs of RAM, which is plenty for a majority of users. Anyway, let's plug this in and see what it looks like. One thing I wanna call out here is the power brick is outside of the device. It's not built in within the machine itself, if that makes sense. Small and sleek, kinda of like the machine itself. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna plug this thing in and we all know what happens when you plug in HDMI. You get video output, but this time I wanna try it with the USB-C connection. So I've got an HDMI to USB-C cable in the back here and let's give this thing power and we'll just plug it into a random USB-C port. Uh, I guess I need to power on the display. Let's see if it natively gets the full resolution of the 32 by nine aspect ratio on the ultra, ultra wide. In all its glory, I need a keyboard and mouse. See if it'll let me sign in without creating an account. Holy shit, it actually worked. All right, we'll get this set up and then we'll come back and take a closer look at it. All right, well, it's a new day, new drip, and new um, things to look at as far as the mini PC goes. Let's check it out. All right, so I figured I would go ahead and test some gaming. Why not? I've got some benchmarks that I'm gonna run on this PC just so that we can kind of put it through its paces. You can see here, I've got CSGO, I'm sorry, CS2 downloading right now, and I'm getting almost 600 meg. I'm on a two and a half gig NIC on the two and a half gig network. But this, look at this right here, 100% CPU just downloading the game. I don't think I've ever actually seen that just running. I'm surprised by that, which is why I turned the freaking camera on. Yeah, I really didn't expect to see all of that. And forgive me, I don't do benchmarking. I don't do gaming tests on PCs. I tend to put them through their own paces with different projects. So 100% CPU, majority of it's CS2. It has eaten all the RAM too. Using six gigs of RAM on idle. Yeah, this is definitely not a gaming PC. Let's go into the settings and turn it down. See if that helps make a difference. I'm sorry at how cringe this is for all of you that play games on the regular. Um, I just do not. I uh, got all this down to low. Okay, it's not even playable, guys. 
Average of four FPS. Built-in GPU is not gonna handle the kind of frames that you'd expect to play or expect to have while playing games uh, smoothly, of course. At least nothing like this. All right, so we've got some benchmarks done now. Again, I've never really been a big benchmarking kind of guy on workstations. My proof of concept or to benchmark it is to put it into use, you know, make it a server, which is a good segue into something else about this. So this comes with Windows 11 Pro pre-installed, which means you can enable virtualization with VTX on the uh, CPU or on the BIOS. Hyper-V can be enabled within the settings as well. So this, with it being a rugged beast like this, could be a good edge compute server or virtualization host. So we've done some benchmarks here, and of course I'm gonna flash these on the screen, we'll go over them together a little bit, but the piece that really sticks out to me is the single core scores. So in multi-core, it's not very impressive. We've got a score of 334 in Cinebench on multi-core, but comparing to what they say on the screen, like for example, it's under the Apple, the first generation Apple Silicon, the M1 chip, even under the i7 12th gen, the i9 9th gen, Threadrippers, Ryzen 7. But if we're looking at single core processing in this list here, it, right underneath Apple Silicon, first generation Apple Silicon, so the M1 chips, is this i5. It stuck out to me because the Ryzen 7 is uh, under that i9 9880H. Even the W series Intel, so the W3265M, which is gonna be a mobile uh, Xeon processor in like precision laptops. Even a Threadripper 2990X, which is a 32 core beast of a CPU. We've got CPU bench from Geekbench at 2214 for a single and an 8920 for multi. We've got a GPU score has as well open CL score of 8576. No clue if that's good or not. Probably isn't because there's not a discrete graphics card in it. It's integrated, supplied from the uh, processor. I really like this Passmark system. This Passmark app is pretty cool, very intuitive, it's easy on the eyes, and you get a lot of information all in one place. Anyway, one last test I'm gonna do here is I've got my Ventoy USB stick that's actually USB-C. So I'm gonna try the other 40 gig USB-C connection on the back of this and see how fast it transfers an ISO. The USB-C is on the back, which is great for tidy cable management, but annoying for things like this, where plug in a USB stick, I've gotta to get to the back of the machine to do it. Kind of a pain. I would have liked to have seen one of the USB-C ports on the front and maybe move that non-power delivery USB port onto the back. All right, let's see how long it takes to move an ISO that is six gigs, 5.6 gigs in size. It's going at 485 megabits per second, so it takes probably about 10 seconds. That's actually really, really fast. What do I think about this mini PC? I love the form factor, just like all the other mini PCs. I love how tiny it is and versatile. You can use it in a lot of different ways. It does seem like it's a good middle of the road PC, especially based on the benchmarks that we ran or, or we got back from it but it, it doesn't seem like it's optimized for gaming, at least not for top tier gaming, which makes sense. That's not the audience they're going after. I would think a workstation would be the audience that this is meant for. The two and a half gig ethernet, wow, awesome. Very key, I'm, I'm happy that they put that in there. It's got some great IO and it's super upgradable with the extra hard drive, the SATA connection in there. Uh, realistically, you could even use that as an on-site target for something like a Veeam backup. Leave a comment, let me know if you wanna see me do a video on that, backing up the PC to itself with a dedicated hard drive. Well, this was the review of the Geekom IT12 mini PC. Super rugged mini PC that's very versatile with a lot of different options here. If you're interested in any of the things that we went over today, links as always will be down in the description. Leave a comment and let me know what your thoughts are on this IT12 mini PC unit by Geekom. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you nerds on the next one.